Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Ted Rollins. Glad to have you along with us uh, on this Tuesday morning after the long holiday weekend. We are expecting Judge Highland in Madison, Wisconsin to take the bench momentarily. And as soon as he does, as soon as the jury is in the courtroom, we'll take you in live. Of course, there's been a they've had a week off there in Dane County, Wisconsin, in the case against Chandler Halderson. But all expectations are that testimony will resume again this morning. And as soon as that does resume, we'll get you live into the courtroom. Meanwhile, this morning, in Atlanta, Georgia, the state Supreme Court will hear oral arguments in the appeal in the case of a father convicted of murdering his son by leaving him in a hot car for hours. Justin Ross Harris is serving a life sentence for the death of his son Cooper. The trial made headlines across the country back in 2016. Harris's defense says the trial court made, quote, errors related to its evidentiary decisions. Those errors include, according to the defense, allowing prosecutors to induce evidence of infidelity and sexual conversations as well as the introduction of 3D animation. Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae takes a look back at this case. On June 18th, 2014, 22-month-old Cooper Harris is tragically found dead inside his father's car in a parking lot in Metro Atlanta, Georgia. That night, Justin Ross Harris is arrested for causing his toddler's death. Three months later, on September 4th, a grand jury indicts Ross Harris on murder charges relating to his son's death. They also add sexual misconduct crimes to the counts against him after investigators determined he sent sexually explicit messages to underage girls. Did he talk about exposing himself uh, while he's chatting and messaging this girl? Yes. And was he sending pictures? Yes. Two years later, Harris's trial begins on September 21st, 2016. Prosecutors accuse Harris of wanting to live a child-free life and Cooper being in the way. The defense implored the jury to see this as an accident. On November 14th, 2016, a jury finds Ross Harris guilty on all counts. The sentence of the court is life to serve in confinement without parole. The following year, in January of 2017, Ross Harris files a motion for a new trial, claiming the court failed in allowing the jury to hear about the sexual misconduct charges along with the murder case. On December 2, 2020, Harris amends his motion for a new trial, adding a claim of ineffective assistance of counsel when his lawyers chose not to call David Diamond to the stand. Dr. Diamond is a memory expert on forgotten baby syndrome. Let's bring back our guest, former prosecutor and trial attorney Vonda Sargent in Seattle, Washington, and Judge Kevin Madison in Lago Vista, Texas. Um, judge, to you on this one first, this was uh, such a heartbreaking case. The little boy obviously lost his life, and the prosecution used the strategy that his porn obsession, girlfriends, X, Y, and Z was a motive. Therefore, they get it into the case, disgusting jurors along the way, and they get the um, guilty verdict. Your thoughts on the chances of getting this overturned by the state Supreme Court? It's always a long shot. Your thoughts? Yes, Ted, I agree. Uh, the You know, it, for the trial judge, it's a, it's a tightrope because that judge has got to make a decision uh, is this relevant? And even if it's relevant, is there such a chance that it's going to have such a bias that the jury's going to focus on that rather than was this actually a mistake? Did he uh, just did he forget about it? Was his mind somewhere else? Uh, was it just one of those cases where it was a mistake? Or was this a heinous, intentional act to rid him of his child so he could go off and do the things he apparently was doing that were illegal, like soliciting minors. So that's the tightrope they walk. And similar also in, in almost the Edgecombe case you know, relating to bail. Do you bring that in and risk something happening on an appeal that that shouldn't have been brought in? So it's a tightrope between bias and is this really relevant? Vaughn, uh, you, you were a prosecutor. Um, this was strategy, obviously. Because if they would have gone to the court and said, we want to bring in the porn because we're going to, we argue that he was distracted. The likelihood of that getting in probably a lot less than to say, oh, we're bringing it in because that was his motive. Um, that's a big right. difference. And it's, it's strategy. Um, I, I would argue that 
um, that wasn't really, besides just introducing the porn, there wasn't a lot of extra evidence which pushed that to being a motive. Um, your overall thoughts on this case and its potential um, for the Supreme Court to say, yeah, you get a new trial because of an error at that trial level? I think the potential of that occurring is very, very slim. I, I, what I envision the Supreme Court saying is that the animation should not have come in, um, but I think that they will find that it was an error that was not prejudicial and that his conviction will stand. My memory and my research on this case said it was very clear that this young man not only had a porn addiction, but that he sent quite a few messages about not wanting to have this child any longer. And so that was the, the nexus between getting that information in about his, his um, addiction to porn and his uh, illicit affairs with these young women and these underage children um, was related to the fact that he deliberately left that young baby in a car. And so I, I think his convictions are going to stand. And I, I think that the um, Supreme Court will say the animation should not have come in. And I, I tend to agree with them. Um, I, I personally, even as a prosecutor, a former prosecutor, had a, a difficult time with, with animation and reanimating crimes. It just uh, tended to give it more of a, a cartoon flavor. It, 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 to me, it diminishes the seriousness of our judiciary system. And, and we don't want to have that be diminished in that, that fashion. And particularly back in the early teens, the animations were just so poor. And, and we just saw a, a replaying of that clip very poor animation and it was not necessary uh, at this point either. Yeah. So that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, the, the argument would be then uh, by the court you're saying is that, yeah, they should have come in, but it didn't make a difference in, in terms right. of the outcome.